Canada is facing a housing crisis, and tens of thousands of people in this country are living unhoused right now. In Toronto, there are more than 7,400 people sleeping outdoors or in shelters every night. But during the pandemic, one man worked to create a solution by building life-saving shelters for the unhoused. His project is the focus of a new documentary that's called Someone Lives Here. With more, we're joined by director Zach Russell and Khalil Sievright, the man behind Toronto Tiny Shelters. Welcome to you both. Great to have you here. Thanks for having us. Uh, Khalil, I want to start with you. For people unfamiliar with your tiny shelters, tell us about where this idea came from and what you were hoping to achieve. Uh, the idea originated when I was living in an eco-village in New Hazleton, BC, where I was moving from different living arrangements pretty consistently over three years, and I decided finally I'm going to build something for myself that I'll just be able to use whenever I come there, and that was the original tiny shelter. And then leaving the eco-village, coming back to Toronto, going back to work, and just seeing people staying outside, it... It just seemed immediate and clear to me that this is something other people could use. What I like about the focus of this documentary is I think people see what could be a... They see a solution and they want to implement a solution, but it's not always easy as wanting to do good. I want to play a clip for our viewers from the documentary where you're in conversation with the city of Toronto. We'll show everybody how that went and we'll chat out of it. Here you mm -hmm. go. These encampments are not safe, they are not healthy, and they do not belong in public parks. There was not a fire safety inspection done on these shelters by Jim Jessup or anyone from the fire department. And for you to say that they are definitely not safe is a complete lie. Who do you protect? Who do you protect? I don't you can sense some of the frustration there. In the film, you said this was by far the most challenging piece. Even during those tough times, you were happy to, to try and provide support to help the in-house. Yeah. Yeah, it was something that I actually... It became, and not just for me, I feel like all the people that came and became involved in building them, it was like something that was extremely exciting to have, I don't know, a very direct way of like helping someone where we can build something throughout the day and just see them that evening and say, here you go, you can survive. Well, to see a need and to then be able to fill it for people yeah. is very rewarding, especially in those times. Zach, this is your first documentary uh, and you've worked on a couple of fiction projects before that. What was it about this story that pushed you into documentary filmmaking? I think it was, you know, it was October 2020. It was pandemic. We were about to go in the winter. And just seeing that first news story about Khalil um, and my first interactions with, with you, I was like, OK, this is a man on a mission to help people survive. And I couldn't think of anything more important than that. And I still can't, like a couple years later. I think that. I think that it's really, really important that people can survive in our city. Yeah. And anyone that's doing anything uh, to help with that, you know, we should be supporting them. Um, and also just your determination, you know, like dogged determination. Like this man didn't sleep. <laughs> this man had the government after him and still he kept building. And I feel like that really compelled me to want to keep filming. Do you have any challenges? Did you face any challenges when you were trying to make this film? Ah, <sighs> challenges. Do you think I had any challenges? Probably. There were Real some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, like, I guess I guess the city of Toronto, you could say it's a challenge that they didn't really want to talk to me, but I also think they're constantly showing themselves in press releases and at city council meetings, so uh, that wasn't such a ch The biggest challenge is really when you're making a film about people that are struggling to survive, and you're, you're wondering if you have to prioritize the film you're making or right. helping these people live through the night. Um, and I kind of tried to do both, and I probably did both imperfectly, but I had a good model for, for, how, to, for how to work, which is just 24-7 and unrelentingly. And yeah, that was the biggest challenge, really, that people were trying to survive. And, right. and, and keeping own. people at the front of the story, right? Because this is what, actually who it's about. What do you want people to take away when they watch this? What do you want to leave them with? Um, that police violence is not a solution to people not being able to afford to live here. That's not a solution. Yeah. Main takeaway. What's your concerns going forward when you look at numbers like what we were just sharing with everybody? Well, that this is not just, you know, people being homeless living outside is like a tip of an iceberg that is growing and there has to be a systematic solution, a policy change that encourages our ability to continue to survive in the places that we grow up in, in Toronto. Yeah. I want to thank you both for being here. And just to remind everybody, Someone Lives Here makes its world premiere at Hot Docs. That starts tomorrow. And if you'd like more information, you can get it at hotdocs.ca.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.